Meg was just like any other girl in town. Well, she was extra prettier than the others. And she had over 2 million followers on Instagram, which was verified, and over 4 million subscribers on YouTube. People just adored her. And she's just in high school. Ding, Meg's phone vibrated. She grabbed her phone and opened up her Instagram. She smiled because on her feed, she gotten four, oh, oh likes right of the bat. She liked being popular. She quickly took a photo of her outfits and posted it on her story, asking should I wear the red or the blue. Almost right away, there was answers. 98 for red and 2 for blue. Meg took the red dress and went to school. While at school, the teacher gave out a new assignment. They could pick any famous history figure and write the life about them. Meg turned to her friends and asked what person she should do. Her friends looked at her and started listing people. George Washington, Martin Luther King Jr., JFK, and more. Meg just stared at them in surprise. You're telling me to do all of them? Her friends shook their head in disappointment. No Meg, just pick one. Meg looked at them, lost. A all right. She quickly opened up Instagram and posted a story. What famous history figure do you like? Almost instantly, there was 200 replies. Some were serious, George Washington Carver, Abraham Lincoln, while others were for kicks, Batman, Gordon Ramsay. Meg closed her eyes and chose one. She picked Batman, so she tried again and picked JFK. She smiled. JFK was easy. He was the president who got shot and killed. This was going to be easy. She spent the whole day researching and then wrote the essay. She got an A.B. After school ended, Meg's mother texted her if she was going to ride on the bus or if she should pick Meg up. Meg quickly asked her followers, should I ride the bus or ride the car home? The poll said 70 bus and 30 car. Ill ride the bus mom Meg texted her mother and walked to the bus station. When she arrived home, her mother asked if she wanted chicken or steak. Meg turned to her followers again. Steak or chicken? The polls answered 60 steak and 40 chicken. Mom, I'll have steak. Meg and her family had steak that night. When Meg was going to bed, her father came in. Meg, I need a talk with you. Meg looked up and grabbed her phone just in case her father asked hard questions. Meg's father took the phone away. We won't be needing that. Meg looked uncomfortable, but said okay. Meg, you gotta stop asking others on how to live your life. Make a decision yourself. Until you make a decision by yourself, this phone is not going to be in your hands. Meg whimpered. She wanted to ask her followers if she should just be quiet or be angry. Honestly, she had no idea what she was supposed to feel. For the first time, she felt lost. Unable to connect with herself, she tried various of things. She tried crying, but it didn't feel right. She tried screaming, and while that did feel good, her vocal cords started to hurt. She tried laughing, but it came out awkward. Meg lied down on her bed and sighed. I feel hopeless. She just needed to make one decision herself, and she'll get her phone back. She went downstairs to the living room and went towards the kitchen. She packed her own lunch for tomorrow, sat down, and did the rest of her homework and walked the family dog. She felt tired so she went to sleep. The next day, she went to school the usual. The teacher then asked everyone to choose any national flower and write a poem about it. Meg reached down to her phone, only to realize she didn't have hers. So she went to the library and checked out a book full of national flowers. There was so many. But she had to pick one. She finally picked Kentucky's goldenrod. She did her research and turned in the final draft. She gotten an A, Meg felt proud. She realized that making decisions wasn't that hard. She spent her entire day talking, laughing, and making new friends. She had realized that she actually didn't know anything about her friends because of social media. That day, she rode the bus home. 
At home, an email from her English teacher asked everyone to write something that was an issue in today's society. Meg knew what to write. People are so glued to their screens that they don't know that their life is a movie on its own. Social media has brought people to a state where they don't know how to make decisions by themselves or communicate with others. We are so absorbed into this little world that we don't care about others. We believe in everything one account says which can cause a division. We let social media control our everyday lives. How do I know? Because I was one. I was dependent on that little device on my hands. But once that was taken away from me, I realized that life is so much beautiful than a screen on my hands. Society today has made this a normal thing. It should not be normal. As humans, we should communicate, not cast each other out. This is an issue in today's society. Meg finished typing and sent it to her teacher. She felt happy that a screen wasn't controlling her. Meg got her phone back, but instead of doing what others told her to do, she did what she wanted to do. And honestly, it gotten better insights than before. She finally made her own decision. When she came back to school, everyone looked at Meg funny. Meg shrugged it off. Her friend came around the corner and told her, Meg, you posted an entire essay about how phones were bad onto Facebook. Meg was surprised. She had thought she sent it through email. Hypocrite. Someone shouted. Meg turned around and saw people laughing. Meg started to laugh with them. It was okay. She knew she was a hypocrite. Meg, the social media icon, the perfect high schooler, the popular girl, and the one who was always glued to her phone called social media evil. But she changed. She didn't use social media the way she used it. She was different now. So it was okay to laugh with the crowd, because she knew they were laughing at her past self. The End